Hey guys, what's up? It's Minutes with Mildred and today I have another video for you guys. What's freaking new? If you didn't know already, probably judging by all the videos I've made in the past, you probably know that I am slightly, slightly just a little obsessed with Polaroids. <sighs> Why am I out of breath? That was a lot to say. <laughs> I am embarrassing. But in the name of I have nothing better to do with my life right now or it's my day off, I am going to turn this wall right behind me, this one into a masterpiece. Yes, you heard it, a masterpiece. If you didn't know throughout various videos that I have made, um, I've kind of made jokes at the fact that it's missing chunks of paint and stuff from it. We're going to tackle the wall in three steps. First step, we're gonna take spackle, we're gonna fill the holes in and give it a nice clean paint job. We're gonna take some of my Polaroids from my 2019 collection and we're gonna mix them with the 2020 collection just cause I probably don't have enough to make a solid, decent, contents of a wall that isn't gonna like haunt me at my sleep when I'm looking up at it at night wondering gee I probably should have put more on there. Three we're gonna stick them on there and actually make the thing a masterpiece. So let's get started. First step to this you need to put your hair up. Alrighty, righty, righty, let's get started. So here is a quick flash of all the materials you will need. I'm not gonna list them all out cause I'll probably bore you all to death, but this is just gonna be um, the main stuff you will need and I'll just put it in the description box below. Yo, this smells straight like a freaking fish market. So here I'm taking that little spatula scrapey thing, whatever it's called, and we're just putting some wall putty on the holes. Since it really didn't take long to dry, the process was sped up and painting and sanding was a breeze. While the spackle is drying, I decided to move my bed just so it make it a little easier to get to the wall around it. But I took this tape measure and decided to do 15 inches from the wall and then I started my rows. And I ended up doing five of them and they're each six inches apart. I also left a little room just in case I wanna add some of the big ones to the wall or change them out later on down the road. This is the box that I keep all my Polaroids in. It doesn't look like much, but when you put it on the wall, like I did my last one, it's a little too much. And this kind of made it a little incredibly hard which Polaroids I wanted to pick because there were so many. I also ran into the issue of whether or not I wanted to do an all white because a lot of my films are different colors or different styles. But in the end, I just started picking out the ones in sets that I really liked the most. And this is the joy of making a Polaroid wall. You do not have to follow Pinterest. You do not have to follow Instagram or any other website for the ideal visco polaroid wall this is all up to you this is your decision you put on the wall whatever you want next i am going in with these command strips they are easy simple and that's the way i like them they come with a little clip a little sticker they're simple you just put the sticker on the wall where you want to stick it and then stick the clip to the sticky part of the adhesive I'm sorry you had to witness me dancing. Um, I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty rough. But you know what, that was me attempting to be TikTok worthy, even though I don't have one. Funny story, I made a shopping list specifically for this video so I wouldn't forget anything. What did I forget? I forgot string. So I just chose to use thread. I grabbed a spool of heavy duty and just started tying little knots in the end. You're gonna hook that to the end and then you're gonna drive it all the way to the other one, leaving it a little taunt and a little slackish and you're going to tie the other end and that is what you're gonna to use to hang your Polaroids on. This is what it looks like afterwards. I'm pretty sure you can see the holes in my wall better than the actual string and clips itself, but we'll use that to our advantage. Quick demonstration, you're gonna grab your binder pins and then you're gonna grab your stack of Polaroids that you want to hang. I'm using binder pins because I had a good amount of them from my last project I did on LED lights, but this is how I did it so they sit flush against the wall. You're gonna hook the binder pin on the top middle part and then you're gonna turn it around and you're gonna flip that back piece. And this is going to allow the Polaroid to sit flush to the wall and not move around. Now, when you actually do go to hang your Polaroids on the string or whatever you use to hang them up, you're going to feed that little metal part that you clipped on, you're gonna clip onto the string. This will allow it to easily be adjusted and you can even slide them down for however, if you wanna space them out more or if you wanna squeeze more in. Once I started putting the Polaroids up on the wall, I started staggering them 
where you can kind of see where I offset them a little bit from the one that was above it or below it. By doing this, it just kind of gives it a cool flow of not having them all crumpled together or close by. I also ended up using close to almost the entire pack of binder clips. I only had a few left but it was still missing something. So I took some Christmas lights that I've had previously and just clipped them on there and cut the strings as well. I turned the lights off and then it all came together. Yes, it's really simple, but that's kind of just the way I like it. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. I hope you guys found this useful and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Apparently this looks like a deer. No, that don't. <laughs> the guy actually kind of does. He's just very thick. <laughs> okay, we're done.